Hi everyone, Radic here from NetVault and today we are super excited. Starlink is here in Australia and we've got one of the first units here to take a look at, if not the first unit here in Australia. So let's take this inside, unbox it and see what makes this tick. So this has arrived from uh, DHL this morning, so uh, it's a pretty heavy box, but uh, let's open it up and see what's inside. Opened up, and let's take a look what's inside here. All right. So, user manual. Okay. Take the unit outside, plug it into power, open up the app. Seems easy enough. What do we got inside? So we've got a tripod metal base. Fairly sturdy, fairly solid, not bad. Okay, inside here, Australian power supply. Australian power plug for the power supply, that's always important. Notice how everything's pre-plugged in. Color-coded, um, makes it nice and easy. So let's just take this guy out. This is the power over ethernet power supply. Not bad. All right, sounds good. And then here, we have a router, okay, looks very, uh, very Tesla designed, very stylish, so not too bad, put that aside, I've got some cables, and this here is the main unit itself, let's have a look, not bad, so that there is what we call Dishy McFlatface, not bad, alright, we've got a bunch of cable here, from what I've read, I think that's about 30 meters of outdoor cable. So that's pretty solid, pretty uh, pretty thick cable that. And I'm just gonna slot that into the tripod. And we should get a little click. Not bad. All right, let's just put this aside, plug this in, and see how this works. So let's grab a power cord that I've prepared here plug our PoE power over Ethernet power supply in, plug in the cable for Dishy itself into there, and the little router that we come to with it as well, there we go, and plug that in there. Alrighty, so I suppose we're inside here so this is not going to actually work. But that actually is a really simple setup. There's not really that much to it. Now, if we were outside, you know, we'd be aiming this up at the sky. But um, yeah, let's just actually have a look and see what this actually does. Now, as far as Dishy powering on, and there it is there. You can see there it's just rotated to try and angle up at the sky. Inside, we're not gonna see anything but we do want to get a 100 degree field view of the sky. We're not gonna get that here because this is actually gonna be sent to one of our clients down in Bendigo. So they are somewhere around over here when we look at the Starlink map of the, all the satellites in the sky. There are about 1,200 satellites rotating around the Earth at the moment. So I suppose this is actually a good point to actually explain how Starlink works. The best way to explain this is to give you a quick lesson in astrophysics. Don't worry, I'll make this nice and simple. So if we have a look at a quick diagram here and say that is the Earth. And here we are in Australia, terrible little graphic of Australia. But all around the Earth, there are thousands of satellites that rotate around the Earth. And most of these are in what's called a geostationary orbit. What I mean by that is the distance from here to the satellite is 35,000 kilometers. And that's so that these effectively appear stationary, geostationary, okay? So they're not moving, they're just going at zero kilometers per hour. Now, that's great for a positioning because you don't need many satellites to do that. But Starlink have changed it they're putting satellites much closer to the Earth. They are only 550 kilometers above the Earth. 
And that's really good because the distances and the latencies make Starlink a fantastic solution. But these satellites, because they're so close to the Earth, to maintain that orbit, they need to be moving at 27,000 kilometers per hour. So therefore, you can't just use one satellite, you need multiple satellites all around the Earth. Now Starlink have about 1,200 satellites rotating around the Earth at the moment. So that's how they're able to cover a lot of the Earth's surface at the moment with the idea of getting global coverage and covering the entire Earth by the end of this year. So we've got low Earth orbits and geostationary orbits. If we look at the pros and cons of the different types of orbits, the first one to have a look at is latency. A geostationary orbit satellite typically has a latency of 500 to 600 milliseconds. Low Earth orbit has only 20 to 40 milliseconds, and that's key. Okay. Other benefits, speeds. With geostationary satellites, here in Australia, I'm sure everyone's heard of NBN, and here in Australia, the government has rolled out a program called NBN SkyMuster to roll some satellites in geostationary orbit. Um, Telstra have some as well. Um, uh, over in the United States and Canada, we've got things like Viasat, HughesNet. These are all geostationary satellites, so they all suffer with this latency of 500 to 600 milliseconds. Starlink has low Earth orbit satellites, only 20 to 40 milliseconds. Fantastic. Speeds. Geostationary satellites typically have a speed of 5 to maybe 25 megabits per second. MBN SkyMuster have recently upped that to like 40 to 50 megabits per second. But most especially in the United States and Canada, are slower, around the 5 to 25 megabits per second. Starlink, with their low Earth orbit, they're talking about 50 to 150 megabits per second. Okay, so much faster speeds. And they're even looking at getting you know, 200 to 300 megabits per second. There's some speeds that we're seeing at the moment out of the United States and Canada, which is fantastic. The third advantage we've got here is data caps. Geostationary services typically only have about 50 to maybe 100 gigabytes of download available per month on these services. Starlink with their low Earth orbit, we're talking about unlimited. At least for the time being, hopefully they won't put limits on it. It depends on how they grow the network, I suppose. So these are the three benefits that Starlink address with that. Now there are some problems associated with Starlink services. If we have a look at the coverage map over here over Australia, you can see there are gaps in coverage around the place. That's why those areas sort of aren't live yet. These are Starlink satellites that are rotating around the Earth at the moment. So all of these green circles show the coverage area for that satellite. And where our client is, is here in Bendigo that we are deploying the solution for. So that's why, that's why this area has now gone live from a Starlink perspective, because they, SpaceX feel they've got enough coverage there to give a decent sort of experience. But we're augmenting this, we're improving Starlink services a bit. I'll show you how. Instead of using the Starlink router, we're not gonna use that. It's a great, very basic little router though. We're gonna be using Cisco routers. And there's a reason why we use these Cisco routers, primarily for failover connections. I'm talking about backup 4G LTE connectivity. So we can connect these antenna points up to an external antenna that we will mount on the roof of the client's premises and point that back to the closest 4G LTE tower. 
So that allows us to do a backup failover connection that we can fail over from the Starlink primary connection to the 4G LTE connection in under one second. So that means any voice calls, video calls, everything like that will run through. So we deploy typically Cisco handsets, Cisco video phones with these, where we can get this deployed, our client will be able to talk from his home office back through to the staff at the head office, know that he's got reliability and backup and failover that will fail over to 4G LTE in under one second. If we have a look at the Fresnel reports on this, uh, Lachlan, can you please bring up the Fresnel report for our client in Bendigo over here? If we have a look at the report, so we do an analysis of a location to determine obviously if Starlink is available, but also what the 4G LTE connectivity is like. And you can see here at this particular location, it's 2.6 kilometers away from the 4G cell tower. And while we do have some Fresnel interference on that, we have enough signal to make sure that our external antenna will be able to perform and ride that connection through for a couple of minutes while those Starlink satellites come back into field of view or if there are any outages, beta outages, things like that. So this is something that we do with our clients as part of the process. So normally we'd go and probably set this up, take it outside, um, but it's not going to work. However, I did just want to quickly fire up the Starlink app on this. So first thing you want to do is start setup. Okay, plug everything in. Yep, we've got it all plugged in, ready to go. It is inside, so it's not going to work, but uh, let's just have a look at the app. Connect to Wi-Fi. All right, we'll open up the Wi-Fi settings. If I go to, ah, oh, here we go. Wants to join the Wi-Fi network. Click on that. There we go there, so we've joined the Wi-Fi network. Fantastic. Go back to the app. Connected. Excellent. And what this should do, it'll ask us for a Wi Fi network name and a password. So let's just enter something in quickly here. I'll just call this Starlink1. Enter a nice, super secure password. Beautiful. Open up our Wi Fi settings again and connect to that Wi Fi network that's there. If we give that a sec, we should have something pop up here. There it is there, Starlink1. Again, enter our password, join, there we go there. Let's go back to our Starlink app, and you can see that we're now connecting. Okay, so that means that we're connected to the Wi-Fi network that's on Dish and McFlatface. If I click on this little icon here, I can look at the settings. And right now, obviously, we're not connected, so we've got 100% packet loss with our ping statistics, no information on latency, download usage, upload usage, or signal to noise ratios. But that's where the app is gonna work. So we'll come back to this when we actually go to our client in Bendigo and do the rest of the setup. And again, we're gonna be augmenting this and improving this with our 4G LTE failover technology by utilizing a failover circuit that will fail over to 4G LTE in under one second. So look, that's it for me guys. I will just quickly go into the app and click on the stow option, just so we can put that away. And I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll head down to Bendigo and actually get this installed with our client. Thanks guys.